So I want to show you how to exactly how exactly to lay out the firebox here. So um, here's how you do it. You see, I have my base belt. I went through that the other day. Uh, I have a center marked on here. I have my width, and I already traced my angles. And I'm going to show you how to do that. You take your damper like this. You center it, center it on your base. And you know what your width is, right? 36 inch. The damper's a 36. That's 36 from there to over there. So center it on those marks. I made little tiny marks to start with. Take your tape measure. And just keep going in like this. I mean, I'm not I'm trying to balance this thing on my toes here. but uh, So you get it like, get it kind of lined up on your marks there. So take your tape measure and measure in a few spots along the front here, just to, off your fire, off your fire brick to the edge of the front edge of the damper. It's like seven and an eighth. So measure a couple spots down here. That's how you line that up. Once you get it centered on your marks and it's square, parallel to your base, trace your trace your angle, trace your angle, and then you follow those out. So this last course, this is the firebox depth on this is going to be, and this is going to come into play in two seconds here. Uh, this last course is going to be your back wall. So the depth is going to be one, two, three, four courses. And I don't remember, it's 19 and something. It's like 19 and 8, so it's probably it's 19 and like 3 eighths or half or something to to the start of the back wall. So that's the depth of your fireplace. So that's how, that's how you do that on that. Okay, let me move the... Give me two seconds here. Right in the way for a second. So we can get some better light on here. This is the easiest way if to do this, and I still do it this way. Uh, you know, I, I built quite a few of these. I don't even know how many. Probably 40 something, maybe 50. I, I don't know. Uh, but this is the easiest way to do it, is to lay it, lay everything out. And the light is probably not actually going to help us. Maybe I'll put it. Oh, it's better to. I think you guys can see those lines. Okay, so we know that our firebox depth is 19 and 3 eighths. That we just measured there. Four courses, 19 and 3 eighths. Right. So you take your square. Come back 19 and 3 eighths. You just have a starting point, which is this line here. On this piece of plywood is going to be the front face of your fireplace this line here represents the back wall and that wall that line there represents the uh, incline portion this is the vertical back wall that's the incline portion of the back wall so we know our firebox is going to be 13, 19 and 3 8 here right so we just have our starting point come back 19 and 3 8 we i laid out i took these fire these fire brick are running a little they're a little bigger than they're a little bigger than regular brick. Uh, so, anyways, I laid out five courses. You want five courses, pretty close to 14 inches on a on a smaller fireplace like this. And I mean small by uh, you know this is a three foot opening by 30 inches high or something. You start getting into like a, you know four and a half five foot wide open uh, wide opening in a in a you know pretty tall firebox. You want your back wall, you want to go up another course or two, you know, it all depends, but, but, uh, so this, we're going up five courses, so five courses plus a joint works out to about 13 three quarters, it might be give or take around that, but, uh, so you come off this, at your base, come up this vertical back wall, 13 three quarters, that's a point right there, right, you can see the mark. That's where, the, that's where the incline portion of your back wall of fireplace starts. We know that our, our whole front wall here, the opening of the fireplace, works out, uh, it's going to be about 29 and 5 eighths. So I drew another square line off the front to represent the opening. So you just put your square on, draw your square line up, come up 29 and 5 eighths. <clears throat> that is the that is where your front face of the breast wall is going to come across that opening. 
your breast wall is the portion of brick, fire brick, uh, that are above the opening uh, that the damp until you get to the damper. You can go. I like to go three courses, eight inches. You know. Um, you can do two. Some people do two. I like to give it that little extra, uh, little extra height there because it just helps with smoke. Uh, you know, if you get a bad down draft or something, it's just you know it's another two inches that that smoke has to push down, and it just helps with everything. And I've never never had a problem like that. I mean, once in a while, if you're in a damn hurricane or something, you're gonna you're gonna get blowback no matter what. But um, so how do you get this? How do you figure this out from the, the portion from the top of your breast wall? So this is your total brick that, that, that's going to be fire brick in in the uh, in the guts of this thing in the firebox. So how do you get from there to there, right? And figure out this angle. Easiest way: you take your damper. Uh, take your damper, and this is the front of the damper, right? That's the front. This is the back. Measure from the front, which would be the front of this front wall of the fireplace here. Measure from the front to where the damper, this is going to be fire brick where it's going to hit. And this is obviously upside down, so it's a foot. And that's what these vestals work out to. The allied narrow that I showed you, I think it's, you know, those are like 10 inches or something like that. They're, it's less of a distance from the front face to where the fire brick are gonna come. And this is gonna, this will be off a little bit or whatever, you know. It, it, it doesn't have to be absolutely 100% perfect, but. So this would sit, this damper, I don't know if you can see this, but this would sit right like that. There's the line that represents your incline portion of the back wall. This damper is gonna sit up there, and then the, the front wall here, the front face opening in breast wall of your fireplace. So, you know, this is a foot, the distance between. So you know that that's a foot. And so all you got to do is come back off this line square. Off the front face line. Come back off that square foot. That's your point. Connect the dot from the height of your vertical back wall. To there. Draw the line. That's your in incline. So how do you follow that incline? Easiest way to do it is make another template, okay? Take two pieces of scrap wood, I mean, get them you know, pretty decent, lay them on there, lay them on those lines, and, and trace it out and mark your angles. It's, it's simple. Just screw them together with a little scrap of plywood, make sure they don't move, nice and rugged. I like to nip this uh, bottom portion here where this vertical wall starts and then your base connect and nip that off because you know you're gonna have a mud joint in there so you nip that off a little bit uh, but that's what you do you just kind of trace put these down trace them out I leave it a little bit higher than the actual total height just so I can have something to hold on to while I'm going most important thing here and one of the big reasons why this fireplace uh, was smoking I believe <clears throat> is because on the firebox when I tore it out, what they did is they came up, on, this is the back wall, right? So they came up the back wall, they started their incline, and they got, they came in too steep on their incline, right? They came in too steep, and so by the time they got up to the damper, where the damper was, they were, they were uh, too far in, right? They were too far in, and so they, what they did, and this is the, worst thing you can ever do to a fireplace is turn that breast wall or the back wall excuse me turn that inclined back wall vertical uh or or you know yeah you just don't want to you, you you don't want to you want to not turn it vertical or even past vertical is what i'm trying to say uh that should be one plane so that, that smoke rides right up and flames and smoke rides right up that inclined portion Right to the throat of the damper and out. What they did is they came they came in too they had their angle wrong. They came in too hard and two courses before the damper, they made it go vertical and up. And what that does is that smoke, if it's coming in too hard like this and it has to go up or back out, 
uh, or back this way to get to this point on the damper what happens is it wants it, it changes the flow and it'll roll right out right out the opening right at the top of the opening and that's you know that's why this one was smoking and that's you know what to watch out for in an incorrectly built firebox um, and it when you when you when you get this back wall and everything it doesn't it doesn't have to land exactly right on this point of the damper uh, I mean it might be a little it might be half inch this way or half inch that way but it'll be pretty darn close to that that uh, point of the damper so uh, you're you're better off just doing it this way so it's, everything's exact you know when you when you you have that template and you lay it down then you can just follow it uh, it's, if anything you it's better to have this more vertical this back wall and then if you get close to the damper and you know that you got to come back to this 12 inch width point uh, oh, this damper's up here. Sorry, I keep pointing to that. But it, it, you get back to this uh, 12 inch point. If you if you're too vertical, you can always bring it in because the smoke will go in to the damper that way. But if you come too far, uh, too much angle too soon, and then have to straighten it out or go backwards to get to that point of the damper, you're, you're going to have nothing but problems. So that's how you. That's how you do that. Um, once I get going, and I don't know if it'll be today. Maybe I think tomorrow I'm gonna. I think today I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna actually screen my sand because I got uh, you know a truckload of sand, and I think they're getting to the bottom of the pile a little bit. Well, I know they're kind of getting to the bottom pile, but there's a lot of big chunks of rock in it. And I tried screening it the other day with a with a screen, but. Uh, the screen I had it was just a piece that they had here and I built a little frame and everything but this openings are too big but I'll show you what the crap is that's in the in the sand this uh, I mean, you see that I mean those things are the size of you know that's a that's a three eight half inch piece of rock there the rocks like that and this was that a one five gallon pail of sand out of my pile here so uh, I'm gonna set up something and screen some of the sand so I don't have to keep doing it every time I need to mix up um, I don't like the pre-made I told you guys this before I don't like the pre-made pre-bagged stuff because it's total powder it's fine inside whatever I mean sometimes you have to use it outside type bass whatever uh, they give you all the bull crap but it's powder there's no grit at all good sand good sand should have some grit in it but it shouldn't be big boulders like that you know it should be the, the, you know it's called sharp sand you know it should have some and also when they get going see that like that that's just a little piece that's probably and it's hard to show on the camera but that it's probably eighth inch you know that's the kind of you know you want that kind of size and smaller in your sand uh, maybe a little bigger I mean if you're doing stonework where you have a big wide joint and everything or not wide I mean you know me it's not wide wide but like half inch three quarters whatever you know sometimes an inch at an intersection or something uh, and you're mudding behind it with an inch or two of mud and whatever then the, the, those big rocks don't matter right I mean it's, it's not gonna affect anything but when you're trying to lay brick you know and keep a nice joint and everything uh, it's, it's hell especially trying to joint when you have crap like that in there you know you get you get a, you get a piece of rock in there like that and uh you wonder why the brick can't you can't get it down you know i mean because there's a rock in there it's not because the mud set up it's not because of nothing it's because it's hitting the rock you know and so i'm gonna i think i'm gonna do that for now but so uh once i uh start getting going here on this uh tomorrow i will video some of it actually going probably not a lot of it but that's basically that's how you do it that's the low down on on uh, how to build a proper firebox. All right, I hope you're all good. See ya.